1858 and hundreds if not thousands of people were coming from the rural areas and into the city and into London. And with the increase in population came an increase in human waste products. Where did they all go? Into the Thames, into the River Thames. CPD trainer Deborah Herridge likes to bring her primary science sessions to life and make them as relevant as possible. What does a, a stinky Thames have to do with children, you know, living today? It has everything to do with them because we still have pollution in rivers. We still have the problem of cleaning water and it's still the same problem, it's still the same processes. So that's um, reflected in how do we use science in the real world. We've given it historic context to fit in with what they might know about London in the Victorian times. But you could equally translate that to the stream down at the bottom of the school field or your local river. To help prove her point, Deborah has her own ingredients for a sewage substitute and a practical exercise for her delegates. She uses a mixture of easily obtainable ingredients like chocolates, pasta, rice and flour to simulate the filthy water of the 19th century Thames. The challenge for the teachers is to filter this cocktail of dissolved and solid particles into something fit for human consumption. And your task is to get me a clean cup of water out of it at the end. Yeah. Make the river in the bowl. You could make it in the tray, actually, but I think it might be more difficult to kind of scoop things out. Oh, Lord, oh! Encouraging children to think about sustainable development and global warming and looking after the world that they live in, pollution plays a big part in that. So what's that got to do with um, young children now? I would argue we're educating them about the world outside, we're also educating them about the science that will help them improve that world. And it is just the word poo, really, that gets the kids going. And I've seen this work in a classroom. To purify the water, the delegates are given cheap everyday items, including sieves and filter paper, and a variety of clean bowls and cups to pour the water into. In real life, when we've done this with children, we've got the fun element, but actually we've got a lot more higher level thinking behind it as well. Deborah's also keen to show teachers how introducing fun exercises like this one can help them fulfil their APP criteria for science. What other sorts of evidence would you recommend? Right. I think technology plays a good part here because we can get children re recording what they're doing. With this one, write a, re a newspaper report saying how you cleaned up the Thames. What did you need to do to clean the river up? What stages were there? You know, report back. You don't always have to write that boring old, what our prediction was, what the method was, the conclusion, all of that. Well, with, with APP there, it's taking a problem that needs to be solved. It's using science to problem solve, to solve that problem, thinking it through in a, a, a systematic way and getting a result at the end. All right, have you got anything I can drink yet? <laughs> Can I just say, I'm not going to drink it. I'm not going to drink it. <laughs> That's the next teaching point, isn't it? Why wouldn't you drink that? Because you don't know what's dissolved in it. So how do we get dissolved solids out of water is the next stage. So you're looking at, again, evaporation, condensation or other forms of cleansing. I think the, the teachers that were here were very familiar with the science concept of sieving, uh, separating solids and liquids, filtration, evaporation. They'd all taught those subjects um, in the classroom. What they hadn't done was set it in that context and they enjoyed that and I think they will take that away and they might not talk about the Great Stink or Victorian England but they might talk about uh, local pollution or sea pollution something like that but they all had a good time doing it results the results varied <laughs> that was a really uh, a good way to introduce introduce science into history because I teach Victorians anyway so that's definitely something that's going back to the classroom with me the same experiment can be used right from early years right up to year six so we'll be having a big stinking school